Paul Farbrace, I'm sure not the start you wanted in the uh, in this 50 over campaign. No, far from it. The uh, it's a it's a a crushing defeat, really, isn't it? There's no two ways about it. But there, there are, I've just said to that there are times when you actually you have to say the opposition um, are allowed to play well, and I thought they played brilliantly. Their first 15 overs killed the game off um, in the way that. Um, that their openers came about it. Um, I thought they played exceptionally well. Um, and they didn't give us a chance, maybe two half chances with run outs at mid off, mid on. But other than that, I thought they played brilliantly. I thought Alex Lee's played exceptionally well. Graham Clark is a, a very good striker of a ball. Um, and 15 overs, um, that the game was starting to get away from us at that point. Uh, the, the only thing I would say in terms of credit to our lads, and, and I'm not one for just chucking away a a bit of credit just to make them feel better but I thought the way we stuck at it in the field and our resilience in the field when it looked like they might get 500 to you know Carson in many ways Jack Carson's spell first three overs you know he's gone at what 36 off three overs he ends up getting four for 70 odd and actually um, I thought the longer he went he, he showed a lot of character, he showed a lot of skill, and he really hung in there. And I thought we did that in the field. Right into the 49th over, a ball went down to third man, and James Coles chased it, dived and flicked it back, and there were two others within five yards of him. So if in the 49th over, when you're conceding 400 and plenty, you're still doing those things right, it shows a lot about the character in the team, it shows a lot about the resilience in the team. But, you know, we can't hide. We, we've been beaten by a much better team today. They out-batted, bowled and fielded us. They played brilliantly with the bat. They got far too many. Um, and they started really well with the ball and they never really let us get into the game even though we've ended up getting about 300 you know that's down to Phil Hudson Prentice and Croaks at the end getting some runs but if you someone in your top four doesn't get 150 when you're chasing 400 then it, it's a long way isn't it so you know they played really well we didn't they outbatted, bowled and fielded us and they thoroughly deserved to win the game. As well as Durham batted, were you disappointed with the Sussex bowling performance? Um, no, it, it, it wasn't great, it wasn't great. But, you know, you got Finney playing for the first time, having not played for a year. So, you know, actually, sometimes there are, are things that are just as important as winning the game. Now, I want to win every game, but seeing Stephen Finn back on the field and playing with the year that he's been through, I, I think shows a lot of guts and a lot of character. And it's unfortunate that he hurt his back very early on in his spell. But because he's so desperate to do well and so desperate to do well for the team, that he stayed on the field. And, and that definitely affected his bowling. There's no question about that. Um, you know, we didn't see the best of Stephen Finn today, but what we did see was a bloke that worked so hard to get himself back on the field, you know, been through major knee surgery and then to hurt his back within his first over and try and push on and play for the rest of the game um, until it got unbearable and he couldn't finish the game. That, that's, that's, heart, you know, that's heartbreaking to watch because, you know, we've all seen how much effort, how much time, how much commitment and how professional he's been to get himself back to that stage. So to see him distraught that he couldn't finish the game, you know, puts winning and losing the game sometimes into a bit of perspective. But yeah, look, we didn't bowl well. We didn't bowl well with the first 15, 16 overs, but you know, it wasn't through lack of effort or lack of um, trying to do the right thing, but that they just got off to a really good flight and we just couldn't seem to pin them back. And it took us a long time to, to get a wicket and then to get the second wicket seemed to take even longer. And by that stage, you know, the game was getting away from us. So, you know, as I say, they played exceptionally well. We didn't quite get it right. And they capitalised on us not being quite at the top of our game. Let's talk a, a, a bit more about Stephen. We thought he'd hurt his hand, Paul. Didn't realise it was his back. So how serious is this injury? Well, he was going to have a scan on Monday and we'll find out where he's at when he's had his scan on Monday. But you know, as I say, the, the, the great shame is the fact that he's worked so hard for, you know, over a 12 month period to get himself back from major knee surgery, to get himself into a position where he can play. And he played on Tuesday for us against Bucks and he was always going to be a bit rusty, but the important thing was he played. And we felt it was the right thing to do to keep going and play him in this game because, you know, his experience is worth his weight in gold. He's been outstanding around our team as a professional cricketer. Um, and I felt it was the right thing to do to put him in and play him. And, you know, unfortunately, he's hurt his back, which is a, a great shame. But he couldn't have done any more to give himself the best chance of playing. And, you know, everyone is, is distraught for him because he's such a great bloke. He's been a brilliant bloke around this club and he's been a great help to me in terms of helping our young players develop uh, and it's a great shame that first game back first proper game back he, he's not able to complete it it's been a great bowler for England a great bowler for Middlesex do you, do you fear for Steve Paul no not at the moment because I, I, I think that you know he, his heart 
and, and his desire to get himself back to where he's got to to actually be able to play again after the year that he's had shows to me that he, he, he you know there is no thought in his mind that you know time's up you know I, I think you know we'll, we'll have to wait and see how the scan plays out on Monday um, but once we know the results of that then we can make a plan but you know, at the moment the, the, the poor bloke's distraught and, and you know that's understandable but no I don't think it's the end by any means I, you know I'm hopeful and looking forward to him being back playing again. Um, games come thick and fast. How good is it to have another game on Sunday and a chance to put this behind you, Paul? Fantastic. That's the most important thing. I mean, if we had to wait, you know, four or five days, um, I think it'd be even harder. But, uh, you know, the fact that we can get on the bus tomorrow, go up to Northampton and uh, start again Sunday morning is really, you know, it's a, it's a good, it comes at a good timing for us. You know, I, I said coming into this tournament, we had a week without a game. We then had the two National County games and we've had a really good week's practice. So, you know, we've had almost the ideal preparation going into this tournament. So we can't complain about, you know, lack of preparation or not being ready. We just didn't get it right today and we've been beaten by a better team. So, you know, within two days, we've got the chance to go again and, and play well at Northampton.